In this video with the Anking, I'm going to show you how to honor your family medicine rotation, and this includes how to use Anki for the shelf exam. A quick outline of what this video is going to be like, and check the description. You'll have some time codes if you want to skip ahead. Uh, first, kind of week to week, what life was like on the rotation. Things I would have done the same, things I would have done differently. Uh, some rotation tips specific to family medicine, and then biohacks, because rotations are wild and take quite the toll on your body and your mind and everything else. All right, so work hours during the family medicine rotation. I was all at one location. It was Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30. It was very easy going compared to my other rota rotations, which was really nice. Uh, there was two Wednesdays when I went and did colonoscopies at the hospital, which was a ton of fun. That was something that one of my attendings kind of specialized in and did on the side. And then I did have some early days on Fridays where I was out early, so that was nice. So before we study plan, kind of went like this. Before the rotation, I had pediatrics. And for the last like two weeks of pediatrics rotation, I was doing about 20 new flashcards a day just to add in those family medicine cards, which was really nice. I was done by the time I started the family medicine rotation. There's not a ton in the deck, and I suspended quite a bit. I felt pretty comfortable with it. Uh, so week one, I did AMBOSS. I did 40 questions a day. I did the same thing week two. I did the same thing week three, and then I took an MBME on the weekend. And then the last week, uh, it was Christmas, actually. So I did an MBME on Monday. I studied for the OSCE on Tuesday. took the shelf exam on Wednesday, uh, which was really nice. I got it all done with. So things I'd do the same. Definitely the MBMEs and the AMBOSS is a recurring theme in all the videos I've done on rotations. I feel like they're really good. They really prepare you well for the, uh, for the shelf exam. I went through the... Uh, U.S. Task Force A and B recommendations, I feel like this was really helpful. Um, this is actually really helpful for your rotation because it tells you, you know, what are you recommending to somebody who's a 65-year-old who's been smoking for 20 years and things like that. But it's also really helpful for the shelf exam. And there's actually flashcards in the Onking Overhaul Step 2 deck that are tagged by this uh, that Dorian made. So if you want to go look at them specifically. But regardless, I would go read them just to make sure you're getting the most up-to-date stuff in case this changes. This is kind of a, a, a lame thing I would do the same, but it's true. Taking OBGYN and PEDS first was really helpful for this shelf exam. There's a decent amount of OBGYN stuff and pediatric stuff on this shelf. Um, if you haven't had those first, I would, and you had extra time, only if you had extra time. I would consider maybe doing some questions, easier questions, on those two topics. You're definitely not going to have hard questions on those, but you're going to want to know the general stuff. Um, for example, you're going to want to know OBGYN, which, uh, w which things are recommended when you should do you know, STI testing, things like that. That's all going to be very important. And then pediatric development, because you do get some well child check stuff in this rotation. Uh, I've recommended this uh, in all my videos. Ask the attendings, what do you expect of me to honor this rotation? Just ask them at the very beginning. If you're working with residents, ask the residents. You'll find out who's giving you your evaluation and what they expect, and then go do that. Um, I feel like that's really been helpful for me. More things I'd do the same. With Anki, I did my questions in the morning. I actually would usually get up around like 5, 5.30. I would do an hour of questions. I'd do one 40-question block. And then I would go to, and I would try and do my Anki cards during lunch. Sometimes I would do my missed practice questions during lunch, and then I'd do a couple Anki cards when I was went home. And it was really nice. I was just kind of done when I got home. It was very relaxed. I got all the big stuff done in the morning when I was fresh. Uh, and then I talked about this in my pediatric vid uh, rotation video, but I decided to change my interval modifier to 130%. And I feel like this has been helpful because I have so many rotations now that are building up and I wanted to keep my flashcards in there for step two. And so I changed this interval modifier to make it so that I have less flashcards and I'm finding I actually don't have that decrease of retention rate. So it's actually been pretty good. Um, here's kind of what happened in the settings in Anki where it is, it's this interval modifier thing right here. If you don't remember, um, go back and watch our Anki algorithm video, but every time you do a flashcard, it takes the current interval and times the ease, this is when you hit good on the flashcard, and then it's gonna times that by the interval modifier, which is by default 100%, so it's not doing anything, and we normally just forget about it and don't think about it. When you add that in, it's just gonna multiply everything by 130%, so it increases everything, decreases your load, which could theoretically decrease your retention rate. I'm finding so much of this step two stuff is more understanding, and so I've actually liked doing this. Now, if you're just doing rotation by rotation and you're suspending everything else, uh, you may not want to do this. But if you're keeping everything in the queue, this might be worthwhile. 
Um, another couple things I would do the same here, also Anki related. The countdown to events exams add-on is really fun. <laughs> it's just like adds a little countdown on the front of your Anki screen that helps you count down, and I feel like it's really helpful. The other thing that I would recommend is the custom filter decks. This has been incredibly useful and getting more and more useful as I get further along here. Uh, here's what the uh, picture looks like of my decks, and you can see I have multiple custom filter decks here. And so I pulled out the family medicine stuff, it's in the top, and then my missed question stuff, and I have all my other rotations that I've done still in filter decks. I just put them all under one sub deck so I can do them together. It just helps me to keep things organized. You may not like it. I would definitely recommend watching our video on it if you do want to try it. Other things I would do differently, uh, or things I would do differently, I haven't talked about this yet. Uh, study the MSK exams. There were so many in family medicine. Just with the patients, I can't believe how many people had knee problems or hip problems or whatever. Study your MSK exams and know them really well because you're gonna get a lot of time to practice. And these are ones that you really do want to practice. You want to know what it feels like when it's weird. Um, State the plan more confidently. This was something that an attending mentioned to me. He said, like, when you come and tell me, I want you to tell me what you want to do. And that was his recommendation to me. And this is the second or third time I've had an attending say that. So I share that advice with you. I think that that's something that seems to be what a lot of people are looking for. The other thing I would do differently is sign up for the AAFP. If you sign up as a medical student, you get access to their practice questions. I didn't do this until like three days before the shelf exam because I ran out of practice questions and wanted something to work on. And it just, <laughs> they take a while to get it. And then I've had like one day to have it. It wasn't very helpful. I did do some of the practice questions. I'm not sure how good they are. If you need extras, do them. But I would definitely prioritize AMBOSS or UWorld or Kaplan or whatever you're using. Prioritize that for sure. Um, and then if you need extra stuff, go and do this. But I, I believe these practice questions are more tailored for residents and physicians who need to take their board exams than medical students. But there is a lot of overlap. So they are good. Um, anyway, those are my the things I would do differently. And then going back to the MSK exams, Something else, I didn't put a bullet point on this, but know the rules of when you're gonna do imaging for those MSK problems. You know, when you're gonna do imaging for back pain, when you're gonna do imaging for ankle pain, know the Ottawa rules, things like that. Those were all things I learned in the clinic and wish that I had learned like before so I didn't look so stupid. Okay, so some rotation tips. Number one tip for family medicine is enjoy the fact that you have a more relaxed schedule. This is one of the more relaxed rotations you have. Enjoy it because you don't get a lot of free time your third year and you need a breather um, for your mental health, your physical health, everything. So this is something that I, I, it was match the notes and presentations to the attending. So what I mean by that is different attendings are gonna want different detail in the notes and in the presentation. So I had one attending who after a while just wanted me to come out and tell him what was wrong with the patient and what I wanted to do. He didn't really care that I gave him too much of the history until we you know, gave him the pertinent points essentially. Whereas other ones wanted a very formal presentation. They wanted really detailed notes. They wanted me to phrase their things in the notes. So figure it out because there's a wide variety that you'll find in family medicine. So figure that out and match it and you'll be more successful and you'll have more fun. So create an exam plan and do it every single time. What I mean by this is you're gonna do a ton of just checkups on people and then you'll do other things where they come in with a specific problem. But I came up with a head to toe exam that I was gonna do on everybody and it took me a little bit longer at first, you know, but after a while I got good and I could do that exam much faster and get a lot of information from it. And if you do it the same way every single time, then you're not gonna miss anything, you're not gonna mess up. That's advice that I've heard from multiple physicians this is the rotation where you get to practice that the most and you really get to solidify how you're going to do your exam as a physician. So that's my recommendation there. So biohacks, the things you can do. Well, there's not a lot that I'm going to recommend this time because family medicine is actually easier, <laughs> but I've recommended compression socks from the very beginning. I didn't wear them at the beginning of my third year and I love them. Links to these are in the description of this video. They're super cheap. They're worth it. I, I really do like them. Um, the mask hack. So I loved on surgery when I can wear the mask that I could tie up over my head, but you can't do that. I had to switch out my mask every day and they didn't have them in the clinic that I was at. So I bought these to come behind my neck. It's super handy. I would highly recommend it. Uh, it just makes it so your ears don't hurt near as bad. And then a friend sent me this TikTok thing that you can Google and uh, you put the little buttons with 
um, some elastics through the buttons. You stick them on the glasses that you have to wear anyway. Uh, I'll show you a picture of those. I've got these over here. This is just what I did with my safety glasses, and I really like it. It's super handy. This may be completely out of date, hopefully out of date, when we're done with this COVID pandemic quite soon. And then a foldable clipboard. This is really handy. You're going to take lots of notes. And so this is handy to have just as you're going in and out of rooms and then to go lunches. I think it's just easy. You don't have to spend time with your lunches. Although I would say with the family medicine rotation, spend time uh, actually making healthier lunches because this is where you have more free time in your life. Spend more time exercising, eating healthy. Uh, if you're like me, this is you know the least healthy you've ever been in your entire life as a third year because you just don't have any free time. But this is the rotation where you do get to enjoy that free time. You get to regenerate and everything. So enjoy it while you can. Other than that, good luck on your family medicine rotation. I loved mine. I thought it was a ton of fun. I had great attendings and I learned a lot. Thanks for learning with the On King. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here as well as follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Patreon. That is at On King Med. Also feel free to reach out via email or check out our website, onkingmed.com, for more tips and tricks.